The color page, this is where the magic happens. The color page contains all of the color correction tools used to manipulate color and contrast for the clips in your project, organized into various tabs. So rather than making you go to individual pages for different functions, all the functionality is located within this one page into multiple tabs. It's very easy to find what you need. And the Resolve interface is really built so that all the functionality is available to you as simultaneously as possible. And in fact, another function of the way the UI is organized is when it comes time to do secondary operations or operations that are limited by a key or by a shape, you can limit every single function in DaVinci Resolve. There are no limitations to what you can qualify. Uh, well, again, we'll go into that in more detail later on. The viewer basically provides you with uh, a much larger look at your image. It's the same thing that you see in the miniature viewer available from within the color page but it's larger and gives you a better interface for say doing rotoscoping work using a power curve. But the other reason for the viewer window to be a separate interface is that it's where the tracking controls are located. If you click the show object tracking controls button up here, you'll see the controls that are available for tracking windows and for performing image stabilization. Whenever you do a track, Resolve automatically pops you into the viewer, so you're going to get real used to seeing this page. The gallery page, again, mirrors functionality found on the color page. The color page has a still store interface that is available. The gallery page is an expanded still store interface. It allows you to do things like add additional still pages if that's something you want to do, if you want to organize your project stills into multiple tabs. It also provides the only interface that's available for opening up other databases and bringing grades from other databases into the current database. So it's a way for you to manage across databases the different stills that you store. And incidentally, stills also contain grading information. Again, we'll go over this in more detail later on. But while you're managing stills, you're also managing saved grades at the same time. The format page provides information and UI for manipulating the geometry, both of individual shots via the input tab or of the entire project as a whole via the output tab. Also provides an interface for slating shots if you need to add information overlays or if you need to do window burns, all of that can be accomplished from the slate tab. But input and output are for geometry transformations. The input per shot geometry transform information is also manipulatable via the primary tab on the color page. Down here you can see the pan, tilt, zoom, and rotate controls, also referred to as PTZR. So whenever you read PTZR in the manual, you know you're referring to pan, tilt, zoom, and rotate. So that's what the format page is all about. The deck page provides a comprehensive interface for doing ingest from tape including batch capture. It's your interface for bringing media in via timecode controllable decks of any format using your deck link card. It's an excellent UI if you're doing a lot of tape-based work and let's say your NLE isn't capable of ingesting from the tape format you need. This is another way of doing that. There's also a record tab DaVinci Resolve allows you to export or output to tape, 
Again, using device control, any format that's compatible. If you need to output to HD cam or you need to output to digital data cam, you can do that from directly within Resolve without having to bounce your project back to an NLE in order to output to tape. The Revival page is a page for queuing up clips that you flag for additional work within Revival, which is DaVinci's film restoration tool, which currently runs only on Linux. It's basically set up just for queuing shots up. You can't actually do any film restoration work here. The idea is that this connects to a database which is accessible from another artist's workstation running Revival so that they can grab any shots you've flagged as needing cleanup work, do the work, dump it back in the database, and you've got it ready to go. Lastly, the Scene Detect page, very powerful page. We'll look at that in the next lesson when we look at bringing projects into DaVinci Resolve. This is where you load in a flattened master media file in order to do automated scene detection. In other words, detect the cuts between each shot. So let's say you are provided with a project and there is no EDL or project edit data associated with it that you can get. You can go ahead and do automatic scene detection, chop it up, get ready to work without having to waste a lot of time manually cutting up your project. So this is a very powerful tool. That's the general overview of the UI. In the next lesson, we're going to take a look at actually bringing projects in. There are a number of different ways of doing that. And let's get going.